What are the best OBS streaming settings for streaming in 2021? Today, I'm gonna to break it down for you. Hey guys, it's Boris or Dave here. Welcome back to another video and my first video of 2021. Today, we're gonna to be doing a kind of age old video for this channel because I've done it quite a few times, but today I've got some new stuff to talk through for the best settings for OBS to stream to both Twitch and to YouTube in 2021. I know there's going to be a lot of new streamers coming in uh, wanting to get into streaming or get into recording and I'm going to have a video on recording content with OBS as well. Um, but OBS is the, the one-stop shop for uh, doing all kinds of streaming, creating all your content and getting it out to Twitch or to YouTube. And there's a lot of settings to cover, uh, but I'm hoping today we can cover them all. Hopefully this video doesn't go on too long. I don't bore you out too much, but bear with me. There's a lot of interesting stuff to cover. So if you do enjoy, then make sure you subscribe down below, hit the notification bell as well, and come over to Twitter, follow me over there as well, where I'll be posting updates for my channel in the future if you want to get involved with the community as well. That'll be awesome. So we are in OBS at the moment, specifically the 64-bit version. Make sure you're definitely running the 64-bit version. I don't think anyone's running 32-bit uh, versions of software anymore. So make sure you've got that downloaded and installed. Uh, as a second point, if we open up uh, where OBS is stored on my computer for a second and go to the file location, you want to make sure that the OBS 64 exe file, uh, if we open this and go to compatibility, you want to make sure that run this program as an administrator is ticked. Uh, this will... Uh, basically get around a lot of problems which OBS has um, when it comes to uh, being able to record certain games and uh, certain GPU utilization issues. Uh, another thing which I would recommend doing just before starting is to go to your settings for Windows. I'm going to just crack these open. Go to System uh, and then in the display area, just scroll down, go to Graphic Settings and turn off hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. This is something which I don't think OBS handles that well. Um, I've been having some problems with having it on where uh, my stream was kind of crashing when I was trying to alt tab in our games and stuff and there was a lot of weird stuff going on. So I would just recommend having that off. First two things to do before we actually jump into the software. Now we're in the software and we can have a look at the settings. So let's click settings. And we'll start in the general tab. Nothing specific we need to cover here. The main thing is that I have automatically record when streaming because I like to record all my stuff to my local hard drive. You guys might not want to do that, but if you do want to do that, that option is here. Uh, then we'll go to the stream tab, next tab on the, op on the options here. Uh, we've got the different services. Uh, and the main ones which people will be looking at are probably Twitch, uh, YouTube and Restream. So Restream is where you can stream to multiple platforms. Uh, it's a really good idea for new streamers out there. So definitely recommend trying that if you want to stream to multiple places and get yourself out there. Um, but a lot of you guys will either be doing Twitch or YouTube. So for Twitch, uh, you literally select Twitch here and then you connect your account. Uh, really, really simplified. Uh, you get access to your chat in OBS and all of your updates and stuff, which is really, really awesome. They do that for Twitch. Um, you literally just have to sign in here and it automatically sends your stream to the right place, which is really good. If you're on YouTube, um, you want to select YouTube RTMP. Do not select RTMPS at the moment. Uh, and then in here, you then would select the uh, the primary YouTube ingest server unless you're having any problems with it. Um, this is where I'm streaming to at the moment when I'm doing my streams on YouTube. Uh, and then you'll have a, a stream key, which uh, I can cover that in another video if you guys want it on, on a full guide to sh like YouTube streaming and how you set up the streams because I've learned quite a lot about that recently. But you just shove your stream key in here from the YouTube website, from your channel, uh, and that just tells uh, the, uh, the application where you want to send the stream to. Okay, so next we'll go into the output tab. So in the output tab, you want to make sure you've got output mode set to advanced. And then in the streaming tab, we're going to be, that's, that's what we're going to be focusing on at the moment. Uh, make sure you've got audio track one selected. So when, when it comes to ordering all your audio later on, you'll need to make sure that uh, anything you want to go to your stream is being sent to audio track one. And then you can have all other audio tracks set up, which then allow you to record to them if you want to do separate recording. Covered in another video when I do my recording uh, settings video, which will be coming very soon as well for 2021. So encoder, I'm actually going to cover two encoders very quickly today because um, there's a new uh, or kind of new encoder that's come out, which is, is is pretty awesome. But we'll start off with the NVIDIA NVENC encoder, um, which is the pre pretty much the standard for most people who are on single PC streaming setups like myself. Uh, so you want to have this selected. You want to make sure that rescale output is not ticked. 
rate control, set this to CBR, which is constant bitrate. We don't want to be sending variable bit rates to, to wherever we're streaming to. We want to just send a single bit rate. Bit rate here, what the, num what the number we're going to put in is either going to be 6,000 um, is what's recommended as the max for Twitch. Um, make sure you go and do a speed test online to get your... Uh, your full download speed and your upload speed. That upload speed number you get for your internet is what will determine what bitrate you can get. Um, for me, I've got like a 20 megabyte upload, which is the equivalent of 20,000 kilobytes per second. So I can easily sustain the 6,000. But going above 6,000 uh, for Twitch uh, is not hugely recommended. You can sometimes get away with going for seven, but Twitch usually says don't go above six because they might try and cap you or they might... Uh, kind of do things to your stream if you try and send them more than they allow. So stick to 6,000, it, it looks decent. Uh, 1080p can struggle. If you're on YouTube, however, you want to put this to 9,000 um, or even higher. YouTube doesn't mind how much you stream or how much bitrate you put in. Uh, so you can go as high as you want, really. But uh, 9,000 is what's recommended for a good 1080p stream. Uh, I sometimes go 9 or 10 just depending on what I'm playing, if there's something high action or not on how much I want to clog up my internet, uh, I choose which of those I want to go for. So I'm just to get 9,000 for my YouTube stream. Keyframe interval, set this to two. That's what's recommended for these live streaming services. Preset, you've got two options here, which is quality or max quality. I wouldn't go for any of the other ones here. Um, the main difference between these is max quality understandably has a little bit more video quality to it, but it also uh, actually activates a two-pass encoder. That's what gives it that improved quality uh, and that two pass encoder is actually kind of separate from the main NVENC part of the GPU uh, and what that means is that it adds to the overhead of your GPU and it can cause more frame drops in games so try both of these out I've been using quality and actually just it, it doesn't look that much worse in fact a lot of the time you really can't tell the difference and I've definitely been getting higher FPS in games like like COD, Warzone, things like that which are pretty heavy on your system so I'd recommend quality if you want a little bit more try max quality as well Profile, definitely set this to high. Uh, look ahead. For this encoder, I would keep this off. I'm going to show you another encoder in a second, which can push your quality a bit further, which I would recommend. Uh, Psycho-visual tuning, leave this on. Uh, as you can see here, it enables encoder settings that optimize the use of bitrate for increased perceived visual quality. It's just better bitrate management, which is really, really good for your stream. GPU, this should be set to zero, assuming you have one GPU. Zero basically means the first GPU in your, in your system. And then max B frames, put this to three. That's uh, You can basically set this between, I believe, zero, one and four. I don't think it will go higher than four. Yeah, it won't go higher than four. Uh, it has it at two by default, but three, I find, pushes the quality a little bit more. It's a little bit more heavy on your system having that extra B frame, um, but it will improve your quality. So I wanted to cover another encoder here before we jump into audio, which is this one down here. And the way we get this is through something called StreamFX. You can see it up here. And I'll quickly show you the website now. Um, you can download it through GitHub. It's made by a guy called Zaymar. And this is really, really awesome. This is really awesome stuff. Um, it basically it adds a load of different effects that you can use on your stream. Um, but it also adds a new encoder, which allows you to use... Um, NVENC with FFmpeg and it unlocks a lot more of what the NVENC encoder is truly capable of. This is really, really awesome work by this guy. So I just want to show you this quickly. It might be too complex for you guys. If, you, if, you, if you're not looking for something, you know, more complex, you might just want to stick with this. But if you really want that extra quality and you want to learn a bit more about the encoder, give this a shot. So once you've installed it through the EXE, which is at the bottom here, uh, the Windows EXE, because I'm on Windows, You'll then have a new encoder added to your OBS, which says, as you can see here, it says NVIDIA NVENC H.264 slash AVC via FFmpeg. Click this and you'll have access to a load of settings. And I'm going to quickly run through what is recommended uh, for most of these settings. I don't have information on what all of these exactly mean. If you want more information on this, go to Zaymar's blog. He can explain all this stuff for you. He's a really, really awesome developer in the background doing all this stuff for us. So set the preset to um, high quality as our starter. Profile set to high, level automatic. Mode set it to high quality constant bitrate. Remember we set it to CBR in the other encoder so we want this to be a constant bitrate two pass this is what that max quality versus quality thing that i was talking about was basically doing i usually leave this to disabled you can get slightly better quality by running at that uh, that two pass encoder um but as you can see 
here, it even says NVIDIA Turing hardware might actually see a quality degrade from this, which is something which some people have seen. So Turing cards are uh, 20 series, 30 series, and like the 1650, 1660 cards. Um, apparently having that two pass can actually make the quality worse whilst also costing you GPU overhead, which to me is just a bit of a red flag, so I keep it disabled. Look ahead. Now, I had this disabled in the other encoder, but I do actually enable it here, um, which what this allows you to do is it will look ahead and decide how many B frames it needs um, at different times um, to give you certain quality. So rather than just having a set amount of B frames that are used, it changes them as you go. Um, and the reason I activate it for this encoder is because you can set how many frames ahead it looks. You get a bit more control and I like that. So I do turn it on and 24 frames is what's recommended. Apparently, if you go above eight for older series cards, you might not see much. So try 24 um, and potentially bring it down to eight when you're doing your trial and error and, and, and see how it works. But 24 works well and is the recommendation. Adaptive iframes and adaptive B frames want these enabled. They work with that look ahead value that we set. <coughs> Sorry, a bit of a cough. Uh, limits, target bit rate. So this is the same as the bit rate we had in the other encoder. I'm going to set 9,000. If you're on Twitch, you can set 6,000. Buffer size, this should just be double whatever you set your target bit rate as. So I set my target bit rate as 9,000. So my buffer size is 18 kilobytes or kilobits, 18,000 kilobits. Spatial adaptive quantization and temporal adaptive quantization. These should both be enabled. These are essentially the same as the psychovisual tuning option that we had. So what, we see, what you're seeing here is we're getting access to a lot more detail on what those individual settings were in the other encoder. It's really, really awesome that we have access to this. Set the spatial adaptive quantization strength to four. That's what's recommended. Maximum B frames. We put this to three, same as we did before, but now we have adaptive B-frames, so it can actually go down and use less B-frames if they're not needed, which can save us a bit of performance. B-frame reference mode, we set this to use only middle B-frames as reference. Zero latency, uh, just leave this as default. Weighted prediction, disable this, uh, not something which you want to have on. Non-reference P-frames and access unit delimiter both on default, and decoder picture buffer size to minus one frames. Keyframes, we want it in seconds, and we want it, the interval to be two seconds. That's what we had in the other encoder. And then for FFmpeg options, just leave this all as default. So no custom settings. GPU to minus one. This is how this encoder works. It just says use the GPU, basically. Uh, override color format automatic and standard compliance strict. So that was quite a lot of settings that we covered. But this will give you a little push in quality that can put you above the competition who are using the standard NVIDIA encoder. So try it out. Next, let's quickly jump into the audio. Let's get through the rest of this tutorial now. Uh, for audio bitrate, I've left all my audio bit rates at 192. Um, this is what's recommended for streaming audio. If you're doing local recording, I would actually change this to 320. Um, but I think my settings had reset, so I'd forgot to do that. So <laughs> I would usually turn these up actually. In fact, let's turn them, let's turn my uh, track two up because otherwise I'll forget to do that. So 192 for track one and then the rest of them put to 320. 192 is a good audio bit rate for sending audio to your stream. In the audio section, sample rate here, the key thing is that this needs to match what all of your inputs and outputs are. So all of your audio sources should all be the same sample rate. Otherwise, you can lead to desync. Um, so all my sample rates at the moment are set to 48 kilohertz. So I set it to 48 kilo kilohertz in here. There's not really any discernible quality difference between 44.1 and 48. So don't worry about that. We just need to make sure we've got one set and we stick with it through all of our things like our mic, our speakers and everything else that's being sent to your stream. Choose all your audio devices here. I have a bunch of different ones here, which I'm not going to cover in this video. Um, but I have my my game chat, my mic, and my game audio all kind of separated. And then I've got an extra one, which is just some bits which are put together to then send to the stream. It's a bit complex, but it works for me using my Go XLR. So that's everything in this section. In video, base canvas resolution, just set this to the uh, native resolution of your monitor. So for me, that's 1080p. The output scaled resolution, you want to set this to whatever you want to stream at on 
YouTube or on Twitch. So I stream at 1080p, so I set it to 1080p here. So both of these 1080p. Downscale filter, for me, this doesn't do anything because I'm not downscaling. I'm not taking a resolution and crunching it down. If I was streaming, uh, playing games on my 1440p monitor and I had my base canvas resolution therefore higher, then this downscale filter would start to do something. And the general recommended one to use here is Bicubic. A lot of people pick Lanxos because it has higher samples and they think it will lead to better sharpening. Bicubic has looked better than Lanxos for a long time now, so stick with Bicubic. Common FPS value set here, and then just set it to either 60 if you're streaming at 60 FPS, or 30 if you're streaming at that, or another value here if you fancy streaming at one of those. But for me, 60 is what I stream at, so that's what I pick. You can set up all your hotkeys here, but I don't have any set up. And then in advanced, um, I have a couple of settings here, which I think are quite crucial to how my stream looks and how my stream runs. So process priority, I keep OBS running at above normal. So anytime there's any hitching in my computer, if there is any, my stream gets priority. It means my, my game will lose a bit of FPS, but the stream will not drop, which I think is important because there's no point my game running perfectly if my stream starts lagging because it's just gonna be horrible. So I always keep this above normal so it just stays above everything else. And then renderer, keep this at D D direct 3D11. I don't have any other options here. Any of, if you do, don't change them. Color format, NV12, and then color space at 709 and color range at partial. That's what gives me the best looking colors for my stream. And that is it. That is, that is all of the settings for OBS in 2021. I know that was a fairly long video. <laughs> I know I covered a lot of stuff in a very, very short amount of time there, but it's a really, really awesome thing to be using this new StreamFX plugin. And so if you guys stick around for another video coming very, very soon, I'll be covering local recording settings and how we can best utilize both the normal NVIDIA encoder and also the StreamFX uh, FFmpeg NVIDIA encoder to get really, really good local recordings that you can then use to upload to your YouTube channel if you're making that co that content along with your stream. It's all it's really important to be doing both, doing both your YouTube content and your streaming content to really be getting yourself out on multiple platforms and having an impact in 2021 because that's what we want to do. So hopefully you guys have all enjoyed. I've got a bit of a dry throat after going through all those settings. Um, and as I said at the beginning of the video, like down below, subscribe for more videos coming very, very soon. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.